So the saying goes, money can't buy you happiness, but maybe it can. Our next guest has brand new research to prove that happiness is directly proportional to your wealth. Betsy Stevenson is a professor of business and public policy at the University of Pennsylvania. Betsy, thank you for being here. This flies in the face of some previous research that's often talked about. Indeed, it does. Although, um, let me be clear that people have long found that within a country, a country like the U.S., richer people are happier than poorer people. What we found that's different is that we found that richer countries are full of happier people than compared with poorer countries. And moreover, as countries get wealthier, people in countries get happier. But it, can you prove that it is directly related to the satisfaction, is directly related to dollars or uh, euros? Well, we're not trying to say that uh, income necessarily causes happiness. What we're saying is that there's a relationship such that if, you, if a country gets wealthier, people get happier, and if a country is wealthier, people are happier. So that tells us that these things go together. Now, we could speculate whether happiness drives income or whether in income drives happiness, although I think a lot of people would find it more plausible that it's income driving happiness. Are we talking about absolute income, or is it your income relative to what your neighbor's making? We're talking about absolute income here. Really? Well, it, but that, that's interesting, though. Explain that. So it, 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 just expound upon that a bit. Well, I think the reason why people often thought that it was relative income was because, as I said, people had long believed that within a country, richer people were happier than poorer people. Mm -hmm. But there was less uh, good evidence that richer countries were happier than poorer countries. Mm -hmm. And so people often concluded that economic growth was just a shell game. We could grow as, a, as a, mm -hmm. our economy, and we couldn't get people any happier. And what we find is that that's simply not true. It's not a shell game. Economic growth is good for society, and that people do get happier. And what that does is limits the role for relative income. But one last thing, but satisfaction in the U.S., right, hasn't really gone up as this country's gotten richer, has it? Well, that's true. So there's not been, I think the U.S. actually is a big outlier in our data set. If we look at some of the other countries, Japan or countries within Europe, we see happiness rising as with economic growth. In the U.S., we don't see uh, a big rise in happiness between 1973 and today. And this raises some pretty big questions about what's going on in the U.S. Namely, one of the things we're looking at is what's happening to income of the average family. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the growth in GDP has been going to people at the top. Thank you so much, Betsy Stevenson. Great research. Come back. Come, do more. Come back. <laughs> Thanks, Hagen. Thanks. Running out of time. The Dow is up 250. We'll cover it all on Fox Business after this. Tonight, playing the odds as the slow economy becomes a bust for spring trips to the Strip, we look at how...